Hey everybody, who's your Jedi here with another review for you. This time talking episode 11 of Supergirl called Strange Visitor from Another Planet. And uh, despite that being one of Superman's most famous taglines, this is really at the end of the day a Martian Manhunter story. And again, I think this is this might possibly be my favorite episode of the show so far. Uh well, as I've said before, I I do like the Martian Manhunter quite a bit. And the the white Martians are introduced in uh, in this episode, and the white Martians are characters from the comics who are really cool. I remember really uh, being being wowed by the white Martians the first time they turned up uh, in Grant Morrison's initial run on JLA. It was a amazing story, great stuff. And uh, since then, the White Martians have continued to port play a really interesting role in not just the lore related to Martian Manhunter, uh, but the DC Universe in general. So just just the possibilities open by this are really, really cool. Now, there are a few things here, like, you know, Miranda Crane reads very much as a kind of a riff on Senator Kelly from the X-Men comics, or some not-so-subtle digs. A, a not so subtle dig at, um, shall we say, some current uh, U.S. presidential candidates. <laughs> yeah, aliens, immigrants. Okay, comics are not always known for their subtlety, particularly when they're dealing with uh, political issues. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, also, I mean, there's no, there's no way to say it. They really just flat out go, the White Martians are Martian Nazis. Now, from what I understand, this sort of relates to some stuff from the famous John Carter of Mars stories. Uh, I don't really know a whole lot about that. But, I mean, it's just like beat for beat stuff with the Nazis. And it's just like, really? Can it, do we have to make it this black and white? Uh, <laughs> I guess I have to say. Which is um, kind of sad because we do have seen in the comics that not all the White Martians are bad. Um, the most prominent being uh, the character of Miss Martian, who, if you're not familiar with the comics, you would probably best know from the Young Justice TV show. And she's a White Martian who sort of rejects her race's you know, very aggressive, conquest-minded stance, and instead chooses to use her shape-shifting abilities to appear as both a human and as a... Um, well, basically kind of a green Martian with red hair. I mean, she basically looks like a cute red-haired teenage girl who happens to be green, uh, even though she is, again, a white Martian. And, you know, I would really love it if in Season 2 they kind of use this as a way to bring the character of Miss Martian onto the TV show. Uh, you know, she's a DC Universe character. She's not specifically tied to any of the big franchises. So th it's pretty reasonable that they could get her on the show. You know, she would be, um, you know, somebody really great to bounce uh, off John Jones, uh, simply because, you know, by the end of this episode, he's saying he kind of considers Alex and Kara to be kind of adoptive daughters. You know, putting him in that position of having to deal with a younger Martian, but one who's a white Martian, but one who kind of conforms to his own ideals would be really interesting for him. And um, John himself is a little bit of a mentor towards Kara, but imagine if we were to sort of shift that a little bit and have Kara acting as a mentor towards a young Martian. I mean, I mean, it's just oozing with story potential. And Miss Martian is a is a very very well liked character by a, a lot of people, so I would totally be down with that. And I definitely did like the uh, portrayal of the White Martians, at least, you know, the CGI for them. I mean, it looked pretty good for a TV show. Now, generally in the comics, they're portrayed, the White Martians are generally portrayed as being a little bit more spindly, a little less bulky. But, you know, I can, um, I can live with that. And they definitely played up the fact that, holy crap, White Martians are scary-looking bastards. And, um... The whole flashbacks on Mars thing, well, you know, the special effects did stumble once or twice, but in general, I mean, it was pretty good stuff. And uh, just the whole character arc that John goes on in this episode. I mean, that part where he's basically just talking with uh, the White Martian and saying, okay, go ahead, kill me, send me to my family, I, I, I can't do this anymore. I mean, that, that was really heart-wrenching. You really have to stop and think of 
the kind of pain somebody must be in I in order to do that. And um, let's see, what else? Um, oh yeah, let, let's kind of get um, the stuff at Catco out of the way. Uh, nothing really huge to say about Win. I do like that they, they're taking it slow with him. You know, at first he's kind of avoiding Kara, but by the end he's at least kind of the point where he can talk to her a little bit. And, you know, that's that's the kind of way, the way things kind of go in those situations. You have to give people some space, and if you do, eventually, slowly, they'll start coming coming around. Uh, nothing really huge to say about Adam as a character. Again, in the comics, as I've mentioned before, he was never portrayed as being much more than, like, I think 12 years old, so I don't really have a huge opinion about that. Um, him taking an interest in Kara, that's, that's kind of cool. And I do have to say, this I think is probably one of the best performances we've gotten from uh, Callista Flockhart so far uh, this season. You know, they have really gone a lot, made a lot of headway in making Kat a much more likable character. Um, you know, she's still definitely got her flaws, but there is definitely, you know, at, the, at her heart she seems to be a genuinely good person, just one who gets a little bit too wrapped up in herself. But here, being forced, I think, to sort of deal with this, you know, her greatest regret in life, you know, that's, that's a big, big up opening moment for, for future growth as a character. Um, yeah, nothing really to say about Lucy or Jimmy this episode. Um, again, nothing really particularly huge to say about Alex either. I mean, at, at the end of the day, this really was a, a, a John story, and it was a really good one. And, you know, Kara kind of coming in there and helping him give him that hope back, saying, you know, reminding him, like, hey, th if I love how she put it. If your family had survived and you hadn't, what would you have wanted for them? I mean, I mean there really can only be one answer. So... And I, you have to give Kara a lot of credit when the, you know, the White Martian is going like, yeah, there's millions of us, and we're going to come, and we're going to kick your asses. And Kara just goes like, okay, bring it. And uh, there's pretty real possibility that White Martian ain't joking. Uh, again, folks, if you're not a fan of the com fans of the comics, believe you me when I say this, White Martians are no joke and are not to be underestimated. They are dangerous, scary bastards. Um... Yeah, I mean, it would be really awesome if uh, they were kind of maybe adopt some of the ideas from that JLA story arc. But I think that would be kind of um, a little superfluous. I mean, uh, I don't want to spoil that story if you haven't read it. It's one of my favorite, just it's probably my favorite Justice League story ever, actually. Um, but, yeah, I can't really think of too much I have to add uh, beyond that. I mean, Oh, yeah, um... Oh yeah, Bizarro Supergirl shows up at the end. I mean, we haven't said it's Bizarro, but if we've been paying attention to the news and stuff, yeah, that's totally Bizarro. It's the girl that Maxwell Lord had locked up in that basement. So, yeah. And this whole, has Supergirl gone rogue, is pretty much going to last about as long as it takes for the, to get two, for there basically to be a TV camera showing two Supergirls fighting each other. So, yeah, that's like... There is no drama in this. This is something that can easily, easily be solved. Now, how they're going to explain, hey, why is there, why are there people that can look like Supergirl? Well, for, for God's sakes, they have Reactron. We just saw them fight a, a white Martian just took a woman's, a senator's place, okay? There does not need to be a huge explanation for this. I mean, it's, people, people are aware, I think, that in the world this kind of thing can happen. So, uh, with that said, I'm going to call it here. Uh, as always, please comment, rate, and subscribe. And, of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Hoosier Jedi. Until next time, take care and have a good one.